Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, November 8th, 2017. In this video, I wanted to take a look at um, uh, uh, on how to determine price targets. Uh, now, there's uh, a couple ways to go about that. Um, ideally, if you have, if you're a swing trader, even a trend trader, an investor, these chart patterns work uh, just as well on any time frame. If you have a well-defined chart pattern, great because uh, there just about every chart pattern has a measured move now as you read books go on the internet uh, frequent different websites you'll hear different uh, measured targets and different measurement rules for each chart pattern uh, and I have to say there's not any one that that stands out I'll tell you which ones I like to use um, but uh, again you're going to come across some other things now the key is these are just guides as to where prices may go and I'll tell you how I how I incorporate those measured moves into some other things to then come up and determine my price targets um, uh, again a lot of sources out there uh, there's books such as one of the you know the Bibles of uh, you know technical analysis one of the go-to books is a book called technical analysis of stock trends by uh, McGee and Edwards uh, there's uh, I'll tell you stockcharts.com they have a chart school excellent charting school it's a free chart school they have tons of different uh, chart patterns and, and they'll give you uh, some of the uh, criteria and measurements for the patterns not just measurements but other things like you know volume how you want to confirm volume in certain chart patterns that's important as well I think a lot of traders overlook that when trading patterns like head and shoulders and rising and falling wedges and things so check out charts uh, stockcharts.com their chart school uh, there's you know Thomas Bukowski he has he's written books he's a technician he has a website you can check out as well I'm not a big fan of his uh, measure targets because he, he gets it a little makes it a little too complicated uh, like everybody else he'll measure points from within the pattern but then he takes uh, these quirky percentages that he's come up with uh, for prices meeting the price target for upside breakouts different percentages for downside breakouts and then he applies that um, and I've been doing this a long time and I find the old keep it simple stupid rule works best the old kiss rule uh, I'll give you an example uh, you know for those of you that have been following the site uh, you've heard uh, in the last few weeks here uh, a lot about XES. This is the Oil and Gas Equipment Services ETF in this inverse head and shoulders pattern. Uh, so for those of you not familiar, this is it. You have this left shoulder here. I had the question marks because when I first started highlighting this, I need to remove those question marks. The pattern's now fully formed, fully mature. When I started highlighting it, we were right here. We hadn't even formed a right shoulder. In fact, we were still coming down on a right shoulder. And so I mentioned that would be one option to take a, a long position where a right shoulder would form or wait until it did form with a stop not too far below ride it up to the neckline so if you did that you have a good entry and uh, again I went over this recently I expect at this point because we're pretty overbought I'd prefer to see and expect a little consolidation here at the neckline before we break out uh, but with that being said so there's your inverse head and shoulders which is a bottoming or reversal pattern in fact all head and shoulders are reversal patterns uh, when they're inverse like this that's a bottoming pattern it comes after a prolonged uh, an extended downtrend like we had here and then the uh, obviously the uh, inverse to that would be a or the opposite version would be a, a head and shoulders topping pattern you just flip this pattern over and it comes after an uptrend and now as far as pattern measurements this one's easy uh, and I think most textbooks will agree I don't think uh, it gets too fancy uh, you just take the distance between the head the peak of the head up to the neckline and then you add that to where prices break out and there are some volume um, criteria that you should apply to this this one has met those criteria such as expansion on the um, formation the right side of the head as well as the right side of the shoulder and we had both so uh, this one fits the bill it's a textbook inverse head and shoulders now if it plays out this is the measured move I just added that line that comes up to about 2150 or so uh, however you can you can see I have these resistance lines which are potential targets for XES and uh, I've made this clear this is my expectation for this pattern uh, it's playing out so far as expected but we still don't have the breakout which would be the next buy signal if we get that uh, I expect something like this a move up to this first target around 1850 a reaction and then finally move up to 2150 and that would be the bulk of that and that's where I would be taking full profits some traders like to let things ride I would not be holding out for that additional extra uh, 
couple percentage points. Uh, reason being, number one, I think that's very solid resistance. I can see a lot of reactions. Those lines aren't arbitrary. Uh, prices have reacted there and just below that level quite a bit. So I think it's a pretty pretty well-defined resistance level, as is this other one down below. So I expect a reaction on both of those. You can see all the reactions in the past. Very, very well-defined resistance levels. And now I also have a line up here where if and when XCS gets there, we'll probably see a reaction somewhere around there. That one's not as well-defined. The reason I wouldn't hold out for that one, if I add a measured target, if I put the lines up or do a calculation, and that target is a little bit beyond a very well-defined resistance level, I'm going to sell here. I'm not going to hold out for that extra few percentage points because there's a good chance it's going to reverse. I'd rather book profits, move on, deploy that capital into the next trade, than try to eke out, hold out for a little more, or more importantly, risk a give back of profits. So that's how I set my targets. And again, if you're a very active swing trader, you can try to game the reactions, you know, cover, you know, sell your position there, buy it again on a pullback, even short off that level. But keep this in mind. When I draw out these scenarios, and I say this often, the charts are dynamic and so is my analysis, meaning the charts will change. Uh, I gave you my scenario now. If, if, if uh, for example, if let's say, just say XES blasts on through here without any type of consolidation and runs up to that first target. Well, at that point, we'll be extremely overbought. Well, we'll have, there's a good chance we'll have negative divergence here. And therefore, I'd expect a significant pullback probably come all the way back in to back test that neckline again that's if that happens however if my preferred scenario which i'd like to see here happens um, this is why i took profits on my xcs position yesterday if we get a little consolidation or pullback first then a breakout well that's healthy because that will serve to have worked off these overbought conditions here um, we might not have negative divergence on the uh, ppo at some point if we punch through we may you know i'm keeping an eye on that but if that happens then uh, we might get a breakout and a move up here with somewhat of a minor consolidation, either a consolidation below that level, a little pullback, and then ultimately punch on up through there and continue on up. So again, uh, if as we get to each point, number one, the breakout, number two, if we get here, number three, if we get here, how do the charts look? And that can change. But as of now, again, these are these are the guides that I'm using. I use these measured tools. Uh, we'll get to Fibonacci projections in a second. Uh, one other pattern I trade very often, you guys know, is the uh, bearish and bullish rising and falling wedge patterns. Uh, here's one on price line. And what I have here is purple line is the, uh, for a rising wedge, again, you can make this as complicated as you want. I like the simple rule. Take the widest part of the wedge, which I've done here, add it to where the wedge breaks down, and there's your price target, your measured move. Now you can see I have two support levels. I have one here about 1485 and another one down here about 1395. Uh, at this point in time, I'm leaning towards this lower uh, level, which actually is a little beyond my uh, measured target here. Um, but prices are so far away that I will have to address, uh, you know, take a look at the charts if and when we get there. So, for example, if we have, uh, let's say, a, a, a pretty much a straight drop from here and we get down to that first target, I would put very good odds at a bounce. We're very oversold right now. If the 60-minute charts, daily charts confirm a bounce, that's where I'd be looking to cover. Maybe if it bounces up here short again, but uh, that would that would be scenario A, or let's say B, whatever you want to call it, one scenario. And uh, the other would be if we worked our way down there uh, and we consolidate. Let's say we fall, but we consolidate for a while and then finally break this level. Then I would expect a continued move down here because this consolidation would have worked off these overbought readings down here and and set the stage for another drop, maybe put in a divergent low down here with uh, you know the the uh, indicators making uh, higher lows versus price making a lower low. And then at that point, that would be my final target where I'd look to cover any short position and move on to the next stock because, you know, the bulk of that, uh, you know, move uh, would have played out at that point. All right. So that's, that's again, a simple, simple rule. And again, line up. I like to line up the measure targets with support and resistance. And I will tell you this right now, I put a higher weighting, a much higher weighting on support and resistance levels than I do these measure targets. So given the choice, I'd be covering here, here, not here. All right, let's look at, go back to ACBFF. 
and that's again a chart I had a lot of questions on this a lot of traders you know in this one back here when we started buying it at 55 cents i still have shares with that same old cost basis and you know took profits on the first run up but uh, again the story on this one has been a period of consolidation very healthy in my opinion uh, it's been a while but it helped to digest that 800 and something percent run from the lows back here i think it was 855 uh, and then most recently we had this breakout this is very bullish. We finally have broken out, and it's an impulsive breakout. You can see I have the volume bars muted, but they're, they're come all the way up to here. Uh, that's a huge, that's the biggest volume this stock has ever seen. So this is a good sign for the stock. Um, it's going to do one of a couple things. It may want to come in and backtest this. Maybe, maybe not. I don't care because right now I'm not swing trading this one. I have the shares that I've held on to, and this is a long-term position, and I don't care if it wants to come in and back test as long as it, it, it holds that back test. And I don't care if it's a one day, but I'm talking a few days. I don't want to see an impulsive move back down into that trading range. That wouldn't be good. Um, so let's talk price targets now. Uh, I, had, I had thrown out a, f a few numbers when asked on the site, you know, five, six dollar range. Uh, one of the things I do, and again, this has to do with chart patterns. This is, is uh, a roughly a triple top pattern. Now, this is a low price stock, so it has these these intraday pierces, a momentum fueled overshoot, which we had right here. But for the most part, you can see there's two, there's a couple candles there, and uh, this this level here really capped the advances as it did here, and as it did here. So this is, um, it looks a lot like a triple top pattern. But triple top patterns are usually bearish patterns where you're looking for a reversal. And in a triple top pattern or double top, you take the, the, the distance of the pattern, this consolidation zone. And if you get a downside break, well, you add it to, uh, you add the uh, distance there, which I did with a simple trend line to the bottom of the pattern and that would give you your measured target so for whatever reason if this breakout fails and the stock moves back within the pattern ultimately breaks down that would be my price target there down around 87 or so cents however i take this same and i don't know if this is in the textbooks but i take this range and i apply that same the distance of the range to the upside and that gives me a target of about 450. Uh, so i think that's a doable longer term target uh, do I think it'll get there overnight, you know, in the next few days, few weeks? Probably not, but uh, eventually it probably work its way up there because, again, this is a powerful breakout. And, 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 again, assuming it sticks, we've only broken out. It's only the third day on the breakout. Um, now let's look at another um, means of, of trying to gauge where this one will go. And this is – I provided um, – uh, uh, a member, it was Galcho in the trading room, asked, uh, you know, some targets. And I, I, I mentioned a long-term target, maybe as high as the $6 area. I, so let's say right now that 450 up to $6. But near-term targets, if you want to get precise, you want to book profits, if you're swing trading, or if you've been in this one for a long time and you're, you're dis, you are you're decided now is time to reduce some exposure on this big uh, run-up that we've had recently. I mean, the stock just... Just in the past, what is that, four days, it's gone up about 33%. Uh, then I find Fibonacci projections most useful. Now, Fibonacci projections are, are pretty simple to use. Uh, most charting platforms have a tool. And what you want to do is you'll, you'll have two lines to deal with. You want to place it on a reaction low. We're projecting, remember, that we're, we're in a bullish trend, so we're projecting where prices are going to head to on the upside. So what I've done here is I place this. Here, we'll zoom in for you so you can see it well. Place this line, starting line, at that, rea at that key reaction low. There's a key reaction high afterwards on that rally. And then we pulled back, and this was our, our correction or our pullback. So I place the lines there. So point A, point B, and point C. Now this gives me the Fibonacci projections. I'll move it down here so you can see we had uh, three of them. We had 100%, which was right at that, lined up perfectly with that previous reaction high. And I'll tell you guys, a lot of this you're going to say, oh, wow, that's coincidental. And it is, but there is something to Fibonacci's, I can tell you. I'm a strong believer. Uh, if you really read up on Fibonacci's, a Fibonacci ratio, the sequences, it's impressive. Um, and this 
can you can see here uh, almost to the penny that's where it stopped today in fact when gaucho had asked we were trading at 319 and that's right about uh, where I actually measured off a different one. I'm going to show you uh, another measurement as well. So you can see so far this line comes in right around 315. And you can see we had a little momentum overshoot. But so far that's capped the advance. That's 161.8 Fibonacci uh, projection level. And then the next one up is uh, the 261.8 Fib projection, which comes in right around almost four to about 397, 398. And that would be the next logical target. You can see if you go on, these are additional lines that it projects. But um, this is one of the most uh, useful tools, again, when you're trying to gauge where a stock or a index will go once it's broken out to new all-time highs because you don't have those price resistance lines. So let me do this. Let me put some lines in there for you. And then the other thing that I like to do with FIBs is use FIB clusters, not just one FIB, uh, whether I'm using Fibonacci retracements or projections. So I'm going to take these lines now, and I'm also going to look at uh, what I did today. There's a reaction low right here, uh, and we can, we'll, we'll look at that real quick, going up to that reaction high and then this pullback. And you can see that puts us a little bit higher. Now what I did is I see a lot of reactions. If you Let me draw it out for you so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, when Gaucho had asked, I looked at this level. This contained uh, prices for a while. There was a reaction low, and most FIB traders will tell you use the reaction lows and highs. And you can do whatever you want, but this is where I measured this one today. I used the bottom of that uh, that support level right there, went to this high right here, and then to this reaction low. And you can see, coincidentally or not, look at that, right to the penny where the where ACBFF stopped today. Again, that's the dotted line. I already put this trend line from the last one. So now what I can do is add a trend line here on that 161.8 off these different points. And there's that uh, 261.8. We put the lines there. Let's zoom out now. Let's get rid of the FIB projections just to clean this chart up. And so now what you have here, these are called Fibonacci clusters. And you can do it with as many points as you want to here. And the thing about FIB clusters, play around with FIBs, the more you have lined up, and they don't have to be the same numerical value. They don't have to be the 161, 8, or any of the numbers. It could be any key Fibonacci uh, lines, whether they're projections or retracements. But when you see these, these clusters line up nicely, those are very good price targets. They tend to work well, whether it's a self-fulfilling prophecy because so many people are trading FIBs nowadays, or it's the magic of the Fibonacci ratio, um, their sequence. I don't know, doesn't matter. I'm just showing you what's a useful tool in trading. So there it is. So today you've had an opportunity, you still have it. We're not far off there to take profits if you wanted to take profits on the pop, if you think that uh, ACBFF is gonna come back in and back test the top of the range. Uh, next, if not, if you want to hold out for the next target, uh, this one can power on up. I'd expect it to work its way up here to, that's about the 385 to uh, 397-ish level there. All right, so again, many tools out there, um, but the more more of those tools you can combine, such as pattern projections and everything else, uh, I think the better off you are. Um, Hopefully this has been helpful. This is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.